When it comes to fitness success, the why is more important than the how or the what. All right, what do I mean by that? Why are you doing this? If you pick the right why, you will develop a relationship with exercise that will last you the rest of your life. If you pick the wrong why, you'll develop an abusive relationship with fitness and at some point you'll stop because, quote, I just want to enjoy my life. So focus on the why, the how and the what will take care of themselves. What about the who? <laughs> how often do you think that people lie to themselves with their why is? Oh, all the time. All so? the time. So I was on a podcast earlier and uh, the, the guy interviewing me is a, is a fan of the show and he brought this up and he said, well, explain, explain to my audience why this is so important. I said, you know, when you look at ideally, right, when you enter into a, a fitness routine or you're trying to fix your diet or you want to become more fit and healthy, ideally in a perfect world, this is something you want to do for the rest of your life, right? I think if you ask somebody, hey, I know you're just getting into fitness, ideally, do, would you like to do this forever or would you want to stop and fall off? And they say, well, I would love to do this for the rest of my life. So the most important consideration is the relationship that you develop with the exercise because it is it is a relationship. This is something that you're going to be with doing three days a week, four days a week, two days a week, whatever, forever, ideally. If your why is I'm going to the gym because I'm gross, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm inadequate, whatever, your workouts are just going to be punishment. The relationship you'll develop with the, with the workouts is punishing myself because I deserve it because I'm inadequate or whatever, which at first feels good. It feels cathartic. This is why when people first start working out with that why, they leave the gym and they feel like they're going to throw up or they can barely walk. And you ask them, how's your workout? And they say, oh, it was a great workout. I almost <laughs> threw up. Yeah. It was cathartic because they hate themselves. But at some point, you're going to stop because who wants to hate themselves and yeah. punish themselves all the time? You can now, only punish yourself so long. That's it. Now, if the why is... Uh, you know what? Uh, I haven't been taking care of myself and my, I can see this. My health is reflecting this. I, I deserve to be healthy. I deserve to be cared for. I'm going to take care of myself. Now you start to build, develop a relationship with exercise where it's self-care. Now it's something that you're probably going to want to continue for the rest of your life. So the why, it's all about the why. How long did it take you guys to figure this out, by the way, with your clients? Well, with my clients or with myself I was personally? Say, yeah, me first. I yeah, yeah. I think out. I think it took a while for myself first. I think I don't think I could help any clients until yeah. uh, I figured that out. I mean, I think for the first half of my career as a trainer, I think that I was operating from a place of like, uh, you know, macros and training, and it's you know, give me your goal, and then mathematically approaching it like that, yes. not thinking like. I never once, I don't think, thought early on in my career like to to say something like to somebody like hey is this something which is something i would say later on uh is this something you just want to get to your goal and then quit or do you want to keep this going for the rest of your life that became a very common thing that i would say because yeah. someone would come in they're still going to come in with these uh you know uh vague goals right or or even specific goals but not really thinking about oh what happens once you get in shape for this right. wedding did you want to quit and then put all the weight back on or did you want to maintain this for your life? Okay, so if that's if your goal is to make this lifestyle change, is this the best approach? Like, I mean, I, I, I didn't figure out to ask myself that until, you know, damn near 30 years old. Yeah. So it took a long time. This, I remember there. when this hit me like um, a ton of bricks because I, I, was starting to, I was starting to figure this out with clients. And then I've told this story before, but I was at a dinner. Uh, it was a tech company dinner. So it was my ex-wife had, in, uh, had, you know, I was invited and I'm sitting at this table with all these, you know, um, tech people. So nobody from fitness. And we're introducing ourselves and what we do, the spouses or whatever. And the conversation at some point got to fitness. And this woman sitting across from me goes, you know, um, I had a friend who exercised all the time. And then she got cancer and died. And when that happened, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to enjoy myself. So I stopped going to the gym and I eat whatever I want. And I remember I sat there and I said, and it was the first time in my life, because I'd heard that before. I've heard people say that before. Oh, I don't care about eating healthy. I just want to enjoy my life. Or going to the gym, I just want to enjoy my life. But it was the first time in my life that it, it dawned on me, like, okay, well, let's think about this for a second. Being fit and healthy will make you enjoy your life far more than being unhealthy and unfit. Like there's almost nothing you can do mm -hmm. that will improve the quality of your life, like improving your health and fitness. And yet, we have so many people who say, I'm stopping so I can enjoy my life. And I sat there and I thought about it. I said, what a crazy opposite understanding. Yeah. Why do so many people say that? And then I and realize it. Oh, you're going to the gym and you're, you're using the gym as a way to punish yourself because you hate yourself. Of course, stopping feels like you're enjoying yourself because you're going to the gym and hate you're, you're, it's an abusive relationship. If she had gone with a different understanding through self-care, 
then the relationship would have been different. And then it would have been the opposite, which is I never want to stop working out because I want to enjoy my life. Yeah. That's the truth. Plus, I mean, it's the irony is like the, the more you avoid and, and you don't confront a lot of these issues and problems, you know, you're facing, they just get bigger. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, they don't go away. Uh, you know, if I get more lethargic and uh, I get to a point where I'm just like, well, you know, I'm just, it's easier for me to just sit here and like relax and enjoy TV and um, to not, you know, go do the dishes and uh, to just let that pile, I'll get to it in the morning. And, you know, it's just like, you it, feel worse. It, you feel <laughs> worse. Yeah. And it's like, it, it's, it's, it's a discipline, obviously, to be able to learn to enjoy um, doing things that are literally our work. Yes, there's there's work involved, but the payout is, um, you know, you, you're you able to free yourself up so you can um, do a lot more things you really do enjoy. And, and a lot of that with fitness is obviously it revolves around movement and, and the abilities that you have and the strength that you have as a result of that, not to mention your body just functions better. Uh, and your body's built to to do that. It's built to lift things, built to move. It's it's built to express uh, all these different types of movements. And so you you actually get reward, like physiological reward, yeah. for being in a good, um, healthy state. Yep. The crazy part is that it's really easy for for us to sit here and say this. Like for example, that story you've told that story several times. I bet even when you communicated that as eloquently as you did, it still didn't change her. Like, it's like real easy for us to say this and to tell people it's really hard to shift out of that mindset. It even, is. Even having some experienced, smart fitness man tell me like that, I bet she still went home and just went, oh, pff, yeah, he's well, <laughs> well like, like that's the, and, and so, role. so when I think about this, I think about, okay, well, what were some of the things that I did tactically to, to, sh to, to shift my clients thinking. And one of the things, and this is one of the beauties of one-on-one -on -one training and getting to know your clients and the conversations that happen, you know, outside of just the X's and O's. And it's like, when you start to see the things that like really make a client tick, like what are like that, the client who, who scoffs at the, what like you for eating that way or training that way or whatever is not the one who likes or thinks the gym and exercise is a good idea. Like she's into other things in her life. So what is it that makes that woman tick and excite her? Is it motherhood? Is it her job climbing the ladder and being successful at it? Is it her writing, her artistry? Does she have a hobby? Like figuring out what it is that, they they're super what lights them up when they talk about it and then when i when i can key in on that then the key is in can i show them that when you actually exercise two or three times a week strength train and make some better food choice for yourself do you know that as good as you feel when you light up when you talk about motherhood or being a teacher or whatever it is the thing that I can guarantee you that i can make you feel better in that than you ever have in your life and they get kind of like huh mm -hmm. Like, because the healthiest version of you will be the best version at that thing that you love totally. so much. Like, so if it's your job, it's fatherhood, motherhood, it's a hobby, it's this other things, but people don't really connect it that way. We connect exercise, uh, you know, strength training and dieting to this, the way we look, the scale, the mirror. And so for people like that, it's such a vanity thing. It's yep. like, oh. You just are in the, yeah, I'm who not, cares? yeah, who cares? I don't care if I have, a it's like, no, 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 that's, you don't get it. Like, maybe that's why I started this journey, but that's not why I keep doing this. Why I keep doing it is because, you know what? I, I actually really care about being a good father and husband, or I really care about being productive at work. And you know what I realized was when I just incorporated this, this training a couple times a week and I made better, healthier choices for my body. I was better at all those things that I cared so much about. It's such a psychological mm -hmm. thing too, because there's this phenomenon. I can't remember the name of it, but they they observed it with athletes first where people, like you love basketball, so you play it all the time with your friends and then you're really good at it and then you play in school and then all of a sudden you become a professional. You're getting paid to do it and it's your job and people start to lose the enjoyment and passion of the sport because now it's their job. I can't remember the name of, uh, the, there's a term for it, but- it's essentially the idea that I have to versus I choose to. So I've done this as a kid, you know, my first jobs were jobs I didn't like, but I remember going to work and thinking to myself, like going to wash dishes at a restaurant. So I'm in the back, you know, greasy, it's hot. And I'm spraying dishes down and stuff. I remember at one point thinking, oh, I hate this. And I thought, no, no, I, I, I want to be here because I, I, I want to make money. And it shifted everything. And I've done this with many things in my life where there's like, mm -hmm. oh, you got to clean, clean up after the kids or you got to wake up early to do this thing. It's like, no, no, you don't have to. 
you choose to because the alternative obviously is something you don't want to do. So if you, if you have that psychology of, no, I'm choosing to do this thing, it's more empowering and it, it develops a completely different relationship. Such a mindset. And totally. It's something I, yeah, and I've, I've catch myself all the time trying to pass this along to my kids because they'll get in that, that frustrated state where it's, it's, it's hard and whatever they're doing at that moment is really difficult, but you know, to make matters worse, you, you exaggerate your attitude that it's like, it's very, uh, like they're punishing themselves through the process by, yeah, by being pissed off forced, about it yeah. even more, yeah. uh, and, and then slamming things and, you know, all of the, the physicality involved with it as well. And, and to, to bring the heart rate down and then, you know, uh, calm down is one thing, but then to start learning how to just associate it with things that you enjoy and be able to figure out a way to enjoy whatever it is you're doing, even if it's hard work, whistle through it. You know, it's that whole thing. <laughs> whistle while you work, right? It's the listen to music. Like I don't do anything without listening to music or having, you know, some something else where it's like I can – I can visualize something that I enjoy or, or whatever it is, even if I'm like doing something grueling, it's just, it's a mindset that you have while you're doing it. Right? Yeah. It's a, it's a choice, but I think the, it, you know, when I became, we've discussed this many times when I became truly effective with my clients, it was more about the why and communicating that and helping them discover that for themselves. And then they became consistent. It wasn't even an issue. It wasn't a challenge. Whereas like the first half of my career, consistency was always a problem. You know, how good of a trainer was, and how great my workouts were, I would always fall in that same pattern of needing to get new clients because people would fall off or they'd stop or you know they'd lose their consistency. And I thought, oh, they're just not disciplined. It's like, no, it's like, yeah, if this is punishment. I mean, look, diet becomes restrictive too if, if this is you. If, you. if you're doing this for the wrong why, you're restricting yourself. And at some point, you'll rebel against that and you'll go in the opposite direction. But if it's a choice, like, yeah, no, I, I, I want to do this. This is something I want to do because I, I, I want to be healthy. I want to care for myself. Well, this is totally why, different. This is why I, say, I asked, too, of how many people you think are, like, lying to themselves about, too. Because I think some people may not also, may not be in that mindset of I'm punishing myself. They just, they just haven't got clarity around their why. Yeah. Like, there's probably a lot of people – that go to the gym and you ask them that and they're like, Oh, because I, I want to be muscular. I want to lose 30 pounds. And it's like, that's like the, the surface answer. Why? But it's like, do you really, because so far you're, you're 45 years old and you've never really cared that much to ever put effort mm -hmm. towards that. Just right now you are like, is that really what's top of priority list for you? And it's more likely something like being a good dad or being a good mom or being good at your job or being a good husband or being a good wife or like there's probably or that being great at your hobby or your craft. Like, there's probably something else that is more their why. And I think the the where they where people don't realize is that how how much what we're talking about enhances that. And so sometimes they I think you just assume because I'm going to the gym and I'm exercising and I'm re refraining from these super certain food or from these certain foods that it has to be this this physical thing that I care about. Like I it has it has to be attached to that. It's like no, it doesn't it doesn't have to be attached. In fact, for this to be a long-term thing, you need to detach from that. It needs, yes, that's okay that to have goals to lose weight or to build muscle. That's fine. But to make this a lifelong pursuit after you've achieved that goal, you're going to need to attach it to a more deeper why, a deeper purpose, a deeper reason that fulfills you in life and connect the dots that, oh, shit, look at that. Those things make that thing that is definitely my North Star that Better. definitely is my why. Totally, yeah, totally. For sure. Today's giveaway is MAPS Powerlift. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we uh, post this. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, MAPS Anabolic, half off, and MAPS Anabolic Advanced, also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I got to tell you guys, I got the, uh, I guess, I, I want to say it's one of the best compliments I've ever had in a long time, uh, the other day at the gym. I ran into a fan who- Is it about your calves? No, what? no, I wish. Okay. I wear sweats all the time, so nobody could tell. Okay. I was uh, I was working out and a fan approached me, 50-year-old 50, 50 guy, and you know he's pretty fit working out. And he's like, oh man, I love your show. And, da, da, da. and he's like, we're talking. He goes, you know what? I'm going to try Caldera. I'm like, huh? And he goes, 
Because he's looking at me, he's like, "You got really good skin." Yeah. <laughs> and I started laughing. I thought he was make, playing, you know, being funny. He's yeah. like, "No, I'm serious. So yeah. I'm going to get Caldera. Your skin looks really good." I'm like, "That's the best compliment <laughs> I think I've got a long time." I, 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 had I love that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had. It was with, funny, you know. It was weird. Yeah, from a guy. When you're, like, I think at uh, my age, you start to. hear I wouldn't that. know how to take that. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, cool, dude. <laughs> Here's my phone number. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Big gulps, huh? I'm out of here. Where uh, Doug and I take off after this, we head up to uh, up to Tahoe or whatever. It was the first thing I packed in my. My bag because, oh it's so dry up yes there. I, and i've noticed a big difference if i'm better with the serum so when i go up there i apply the serum at a, at a much higher volume than i do when i'm down here like it's it's a regular thing for me but there i feel like i'm having to put it on like now what's the this. secret trip you guys yeah, went on together what are you guys doing up there it's it's right. Right. Yeah, it's like wouldn't it's you not, like to know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no maybe not i don't know it's gonna happen no what are you guys doing up there this is where doug and i plan everything about the business you know oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. what justin yeah, and i are doing yeah. just, just the, <laughs> the takeover like how they're gonna puppeteer yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to bring it this up is, like this. This is what Doug and I decide how much we're going to pay you guys. Yeah. <laughs> how much do we want to let them know how much the business yeah. is? No, made. really. Are you, you guys are just going up there because of snow? We're going to ride. We're going to go ride. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's Dude, now snow you, is you, great. You don't you don't snowboard. You, snee, you ski. Yeah, I, well, I ski. Snee. He does both. I, don't know why I, <laughs> I do it. both, but I don't snowboard anymore. Okay. And you're yeah. snowboarding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is yeah. it the same I'm runs or are they separate? Oh, the no, same runs. Say, oh my God. I don't that, know. Bro, I never skied in my life. That is crazy. That I have no idea. <laughs> We've got to bring <laughs> you up there sometime. the same mountain you guys have yeah, to ride? Last well, time he was with us, he went to the, uh, the what do you call that? The, the lodge. At the, yeah. And dude. then you're the chilling down there. I've never done either one. You're so fun. When did you get out of your comfort zone and do some of that stuff? I do stuff out of my comfort zone all the time. You do? Yeah. When was the last thing you did? Let me see. What did I do? I went barefoot in the grass. That was really uncomfortable. Really stepping out there. There's guy. a spider here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> if I like this, dude. Isn't it too late for me to try that now? No, it's totally it's no never way. too late to do any of those things. What do you okay? Uh, so since we're on this and we're teasing you, what is it? Yeah. Uh, what do you think it is about either how you were raised, the things you're into that you are like? I mean, I, I sent a thing to the guys the other day too about going on the race car track. Instantly, I got Justin and Doug. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. So like, no. Yeah. No. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go do something else. I just know what I like and what I don't like. I'm going to go I inside. That there's no, there, yeah. Racing a Ferrari around a track does not appeal to you? I, I Look, you guys know I like to drive fast. I don't, it's not, I'm not against driving fast. That's why I racing. thought you would be all about it. I don't know. On a track? I don't know. It's not as, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's more fun and risky out, out in the real yeah, world. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I probably would You're be. You're dodging old ladies are way, way, way more, 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 more. More at risk, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah You're getting chased by the cops. Yeah, I mean, do you ever no. dig into that? What is the what is the, the risk adverse? There's just, I know what I like and what I don't like. Why, like, you say, like, look, we're at the age now. You know what you like, you don't like. Yeah, you want to watch scary movies? No. 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 Yeah, so it's, and it's not like, because yeah. you're being a chicken, you're just like, oh, I know what I know what happens yeah. when I watch scary movies. <laughs> yeah. There's some things I enjoy and some things I don't enjoy, and I don't know if I'd enjoy. I don't think I want to try skiing. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I feel like that. But then you also have. Remember when we first, when you and Jessica first got together, and she really pushed you to go and like hiking, hiking into that. And then all of a sudden, you had this new thing, this new found love. Well, for. hiking's different. But she kind of tricked me too. She was like, "You know why?" <laughs> so I got to trick you. You know what? Just show. Ha! We're yeah. racing today. Well, you know, I know what skiing is. <laughs> yeah. She's like, "Do you?" It was when we first started dating. She's like, "Hey, I like hike. Do you like to hike?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Now my experience hiking was, yeah. you, know, you go up on there's like a like a big ass trail, and you're just walking through the hills. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's go walk through some trees. Yeah. She took me on some gangster ass trails with like rocks and boulders and stuff. And at that point, how many I'm, supplements did she have to like sprinkle? None, the yeah. path for you? none, because we were yeah. we just started dating, and I don't want to look like a you know like a, yeah. like a pussy. So I'm like, <laughs> so I'm like looking at the trail, and I remember asking her a couple. I'm like, she diggled sex. That's what she did. Yeah. Afterwards, yeah. we'll have well, sex. See, now you guys yeah. know how to get me that's to go more skiing. powerful. Oh, you guys want me to go skiing? <laughs> no, we we started hiking, and I'm, I'm, I remember a couple of times. I'm like, where's the trail? She's like, oh, we got to go up this climb over that and do this thing over here. And I'm like, uh, okay, let's do this. <laughs> so, otherwise, I don't know if I would have done it, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we're going to probably go this week. We haven't done it in a long time. You guys go for a hike? Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't rain, but we want to do uh, pinnacles. I used to, I used to hate hiking too, and it was, it was a newfound love later on. I, and I felt bad for the the girls I dated in the past that were like hardcore hikers and always wanted me to go hiking. I refused to go hiking, yeah. and then like, Katrina and I hike all the time. Yeah. I, I, I do like you do the hardcore hikes. I mean, what's your definition of hardcore? Like, am you know, I getting, like, am I can't carabiner it up and I'm fucking scared. Like, uh, I don't know. I think they rank them. Aren't there levels? There's like a, like a, a trail number four. I mean, I've, I've, I've done, I mean, I'm not getting carabiner, like half dome. carabinered Maybe up. Maybe like a half dome type thing? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. of course. Oh, have yeah, you done half yeah, dome? Yeah, yeah, we have. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I've done like almost all the Yosemite Oh, climbs. yeah, so that's, so those are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The I mean, one the, I did in, in Kauai was, that was the, the Kalalau Trail. That yeah, was, those, mm -hmm. those are great.
also was not i mean this was back when i was skinny kid trying to get buff so extra yeah. like that you don't was, have too many calories yeah no that was literally the thought process like why would i go walk and burn more calories that's so crazy like, yeah. i'm nowhere near the weight i want to be yeah, dude, <laughs> like, hilarious. Like, you know how much more calories i gotta eat if i go do that that's so that's so, literally and then i like to do things like basketball so i'm like man if i'm gonna go burn a bunch of calories i'm gonna at least play yeah. a sport yeah. that i love so that was kind of my my well thought i've process. definitely changed i used to love like hiking running doing all that stuff and now it's like you know, and biking. I'm trying to convince Courtney to do the bike, but even now the bike, I'm like, I want to do the electric bike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's where I'm at in life. Well, you know what? I, I had to be really careful of, and I catch myself doing this. And it, I'm thank God I have a partner that knows knows me really well and said something to me. It's like because you know it's uh, we're busy. We got a lot of stuff going on. Like I'm, Katrina and Max can't come with me. I always miss my son really bad and my wife when I leave like that. And so <laughs> I, <threw> it <laughs> <the end>. <laughs> <laughs> I always miss my son and my wife. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> so I miss both of them like crazy. So e easily I could be like, ah, I don't need to go, you know, and yeah. I won't go, you know what I'm saying? And she's like, don't do that. You know how much you love doing that. Yeah. And I always do because it's an effort to go. It's mm -hmm. effort to drive uh, up there yeah. and load yeah. up and get yeah. up early and yeah. do all stuff like that. Stuff that you didn't think about when you were 20. You didn't give right. a shit about, right? Yeah. But now you're all like, ah, fuck, I got to do this and that. I should be doing this. And I should be doing that. Yeah. But it's like, then once I get out there, I'm like, oh, man, this is why I do this. And so mm. I always try and catch myself when I have moments like that and things where I'm like, I'm, ah. Uh, yeah, because you tuck yourself oh, out of you it. You used to do the day trips, right? You just drive early in the morning, yes. all the way up, ski all day, and then drive back. Yes. Like, I would never do that now. I no. used to always do that. Yeah, I would so, do all the time. Time. Yeah, so the, and we have a cabin there now, so it's like, come yeah. on, Adam, I can, I can muster yeah. up. <laughs> to, 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 to yeah, get, get. So I, I mean, I, and I, I don't know. That's an eight thing of getting older, right? It's you also can, easy to talk yourself out of things when you're going to do things with kids. You know, easy. And I have little kids, like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to do this thing on the weekend, and then you start to, you know, the date starts coming up. And you're like, let's just stay home. You know what <laughs> I mean? I don't know if I want to go anywhere. But you end up regretting it, even mm -hmm. when you go and it's stressful and you pack things up and the baby, oh, the baby has to nap or whatever. It, it typically turns out it's experiences. Yeah, it I does. mean when you because I mean, it's so easy to stay at home. I mean, dude, yes. I mean, and when you look back, when you and I always try and remind myself of that, like when you think of people that are on their deathbed, like nobody ever talks about the bank, the zeros in their bank account. It's, it's experiences, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they always wish they had more of those. And so I always try and remember, like when someone challenges with me with an opportunity to do an experience, even mm -hmm. if my first instinct is like, yeah, I'm not really into that. Or whatever, but you know what? Like I should try, I should go try. It's a challenge for people who have like things with control. I can be like that a little bit like, Oh, the unknown. Uh Oh, am I not going to be able to control, you know, everything that's going on with the kids or whatever. But if you kind of be a little loose and you know, shit's going to pop up or whatever. Like that one story you told Justin, where was it the dog that threw up or shit all over the place? Was, <laughs> as I was listening to that story, when you guys are yes. at the Christmas tree, yeah, I was like, how did you survive that? Cause I'm so, like I could be so uptight. Like oh, if that happened, yeah. no, it, it was. Yeah. I would, we probably would have got divorced. It was out of my control. Yeah, yeah, it was just one of those. Yeah, I don't know. You just kind of like figure, like, wow, this it. is. I, I kind of get to a point now. I've gotten better as I've gotten older about like just starting to laugh earlier about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, Instead of get pissed. Who's like, better that in that situation? You or Courtney? Me. You? Oh, you are. Oh. Yeah. So she's more. Oh yeah. yeah oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was trying to it. save you but I know I was like I can't save you here on this like, no, no. Yeah. yeah but it that's taking a lot of work because I used to just fly off the handle you know like, uh, really? oh yeah I uh, was I had real bad anger and rage and all that especially in high school yeah. and that's why like football was such a great outlet for me because it was like I just, <laughs> just kill people had to direct <laughs> I was so tired yeah. once I got home I was like the, the most manageable you. kid ever you know I'm just like <laughs> All of my hate and yeah. just, you know, just driving it into Dude, one guy. Yeah. Laughter <laughs> is such a powerful thing during stressful uh, situations. Uh, like I find Jessica and I are doing this more often these days where something happens with kids is stressful or whatever. Uh, and then we'll look at each other and we'll just kind of like laugh like, oh, you know, fuck, whatever. And we start giggling. And yeah. it's like, it just brings everything way down. Yeah, know? I've seen it. I've seen people say things like that in like those moments. Like if you force a fake smile or a fake it'll laugh, happen. it'll, it'll, it'll yeah. completely change. Because the, it's a stress reliever. Yeah. yeah. In fact, naturally it happens to some people. You ever notice some people when they get really anxious or nervous, they'll smile or laugh. 
it's because it's a natural your yeah. body wants to relief that relief that stress or that anxiety even so that the, did we talk about this the other day on the podcast or was this off air like the remember the exercise that the Gottmans used to do where they would fake an interruption to the to the yeah. couples yeah, yeah so they would they would monitor they, they get them calm yeah down. they would yeah. monitor the couples and then when they when a fight would start to happen they go oh wait something's going on with our cameras can you guys pause for a second and then they would separate them they would they made it up though there wasn't really yeah. a problem they just knew that mm -hmm. diffusing it for like I think it was like 15 minutes yeah. it wasn't even however long, long it took for the and then bring it back. Long, yeah. And then all of a sudden it would Five like even. it would reduce it by like a dramatic amount, yeah. like change it. It's like, man, how powerful is like just knowing that too is like, hey, in those moments when you feel so enraged it's or so crazy, wa wanting dude. to react to your partner doing something, it's like actually you can be mad, just give just yourself take 15 a little minutes. Time out. <laughs> yeah, take a 15 minute <laughs> I'm break. Go over here. Yeah, and then come back and be as mad. And you see know what's what weird about that is that we are uh uh, addicted without realizing it to those bad feelings. Of you course. think you don't want those bad feelings, but you know what you can do to make them go away, and yet you can't do that thing. Well, I mean, it's so weird. That's yeah. because of the and you. I mean, you know this better than any of us. The the science behind that, right? The the all the hormones and the the chemicals that are being released, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a there's even a, though it doesn't feel good, it's like you're addicted. It's like riding a roll. It's it. like it gives you the same feelings as riding a roller coaster in a sense, yeah. right? Like, yeah, and we're addicted to that feeling, right? And, and your so ego it's like, feeds off. Yeah, of so there's a part of you that thinks that subconsciously that you like it or you mm -hmm. want it, and so you're attracted to it. And so, it's so weird how much suffering is in our own minds. Like the other night, I woke up, uh, the 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 baby piped up a little bit, went back to sleep, but then because I was awake, I I did. I, you ever do this where you get into a thought cycle and then you're fucked? You're not going to sleep. Mm -hmm. So I woke up, she piped up a little bit, and then I have a monitor where I can hear my three-year-old in his room, and he's he's not in our room. So I'm listening to the monitor to see if I hear anything. And then I just started going through scenarios like, what if somebody took him? And I didn't know. Should oh I go check God. them out? <laughs> Should I go check the monitor? Should I wake up? Should I go get up, go look at the monitor, go check? And then that's it. Now my head's spinning. Hmm. Now stress starts to go up. Couldn't go back to sleep. I was oh up for like an God. hour and a half, two hours, oh God, trying to bring thing. myself down. Oh that's the worst. That's the absolute worst. Anyway, I got to tell you guys, I've been using, so I've been focusing a lot on lower body mobility because I, I just keep running into issues with my hips and, and knee and I, I get addicted to heavy, you know, squats and deadlifts. And so I'm like, I told myself I'm going to, all my lower body workouts are going to be lower intensity, focusing on, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to target hamstrings, glutes, hips. Then I'm going to go to quads at the very end. But I've been using the belt loop squat a lot, and I haven't used that in a while. It has to be one of the best exercises or machines to improve squat mobility. It's got to be one of the best. Oh, at the at the at the gym. Yes, no, no, I know. I was like, oh, what, I what's that called? That. It's called something. I think it's called a belt squat. Is that what it's the called? Belt squat. Yeah, I thought it was called so something it's else. From under, so it pulls this platform. Yeah, so you, yeah. it goes around your your low back and it pulls down between like your legs chain. and it pulls you down by the hips. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so you can really sink into it. And work on deep hip mobility. Yeah. And it feels, because of the resistance, yeah. it pulls you into the position. And then you can push yourself up. That yeah, was right. yeah, those, squat. Yeah. Yeah, bell squat. It's, it's, the, it's one of the best machines that I've ever used to help with squat mobility. Because I get into the squat, and then what I'll do is, because of the resistance, it's easier to get into a position, right? Mm -hmm. And then I can move my knees forward. I could really focus on ankle mobility. I could widen my knees, focus on my hips and come up. And I don't use my, I use a plate. So it's very light resistance. Mm. It's a great, great, have you guys ever, I know I've seen Dunn use it. Dunn I've used, used it. it a few times. Yeah, uh, I, I like I it. Enjoy it. I like it. Yeah. I've, I've used it. I mean, I, for different reasons though. I think I think it feels great just to load that sucker and you feel extra safe. It's different. Because there's, there's nothing on your yeah, back. Yeah, there's a, when you, you start putting four plates plus on your pack, it, there's something about that that just yeah. you know, like yeah. makes you pucker up and it's, it's scary. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I, I've been doing it long enough now that I, I always ask myself like, when is this not going to feel scary? <laughs> like it still, still feels scary when you are lifting that much weight Weight more than you weigh on your back and so that it takes that fear out of like oh i could just drop this down and i have this thing i'm holding on to you know yeah i've had i don't know if it was on a flywheel or it was one of those kind of resistance um where it was like i don't know like how you call that but um basically it like it, it would it would um oh, the, it would pull through like the pulley system the one pulling yeah. yeah i've seen that so there's a few a few products out there too that you know, you can attach to a squat rack and stuff and do like rows and things. But um, what I like about it is you can get really uh, you, a lot of acceleration with it. Oh, and it's like, and it's so the harder you natural. pull, the harder, harder the, resistance. Pull, the, the resistance increases. Yes. 
Um, and so to be able to like do explosive training with those flywheel type technology is really fun to do. Yes. So I, I move, I've done that like a little bit more aggressively and fast and it's, uh, it's a totally different feel. It's great. Yeah. I love ex explosive training feels when you do it right. You just feel good at the end. It's not exhaustive. I think a lot of people think you need to feel No, at the end of that, you should feel energized. Yeah. You know, did you guys, did I talk about the law, the bill that was passed in, in Florida on social media? Did you guys, did I tell you guys about this? They passed a bill for social media? Yes. No, so they passed that. legislation. He's banning I want, I want you guys, well, I want you guys opinion on this. Florida, uh, has passed legislation that would ban anyone under the age of 16 from social media platforms. Oh, interesting. Wow. So you have to be 16 or interesting. older. Interesting. I mean, I'm not against that. Yeah. I'm not against that. Yep. I mean, here's the thing. Like, a, it's a third party verification it's been system. working for China. I mean, they, well, they go too far. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You're, hey, you're, yeah. Hey, you know, what's funny. You ever seen those eighties, there's like early eighties clips of people being interviewed when they're passing DUI laws. Have you seen those? They're like, oh, what are we going to be, Russia next? I can't even enjoy a beer on the way home. Oh, yeah, the old, old, the old 50s <laughs> yeah, or whatever it was, 40s, whenever yeah, I saw yeah, those. Those were hella funny. I was like, you got to love America. You know, hard work. It's you un -American. Pop a can on? This is ridiculous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Damn commies taking over. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. I, I, I'm not against this. I, I'm, I, uh, I, I'm for it. I mean, yeah. how can I be? Because I, I, I want to try and do that in my own home. Right. And so yeah. if I had the support of the government behind, I mean, I know we're like, we're less government, less government, yeah. all of us. Right. So yeah. I think that we lean typically that way, but we put an age limit on cigarettes and alcohol. I think social media is as dangerous. I uh, really do. I agree. I think it can be as toxic as, especially for a 12 year old mind. Oh my God. You know, maybe not a 18 year old mind. It's not that, cr but even though I still think it is for an 18 year old mind. But it's, yeah, absolutely. It's I think a it massive be, distraction. I yeah. mean, you can't deny that fact. Well, and it's also, it's, and it's, and it's, uh, it's, it's clothed or wrapped in this, uh, in, in this positive thing. So like, yeah. you, even at least a 12 year old yeah. kid knows that alcohol and cigarettes are bad. We've, we've got enough messaging around that. We yeah. have the skull and crossbones. You'll die on the side of it. Like, you know, so yeah. a 12 year old yeah. kid, if you ask 12 year old kid, uh, and you put it literally put it in like this, um, uh, uh, what's the unhealth? What's 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 unhealthy for you? What's healthy for you? And you put social media in there with alcohol, cigarettes. They wouldn't even think social no. media. So that's the to me one of the most dangerous parts about it is that it's it. Everyone thinks it's so positive, and so these kids are just getting reinforced with that, and then they're getting addicted to it. They don't even realize. I, I here, here's why I I'm I'm opposed for the most part on heavy regulations for adults. Okay, but for children, what happens is uh, these companies start to market towards these children, it becomes very challenging to, to combat. Um, especially if you're a parent that works a, a job, single parent two you know, two jobs and you can't always be there. Like I even support <coughs> certain foods being advertised to children, practices being advertised to children. Um, and social media is one of them. I think this is a, a huge positive. I would like to see this uh, in other States as well. Okay. So I and have the data on that is by the way, on social media is, is coming back bad now that it's been around long enough. With kids, it doesn't look good. And, so and the, and the so it's unanimous. Or all of yeah. us are that yeah. way. You, that, you agree? At what point do you look at it like it's the next cigarettes? You yeah. know, like yeah. how do you how do you justify it uh, long term? When I mean, yeah, we've been waiting on the data, but it's like we know, we already know. I know. Okay, it's, so it's not good. Since we're talking about regulation, we're all unanimous on this one. Here's one where we might be split, and I haven't wrapped my brain around which side. I bounce back and forth on this, and I've been thinking about it a lot, especially since almost every other country is not like us in this case. Should we be able to advertise uh, drugs, pharma? Oh, no. No. You know why? Well, here, okay, so here's the counter, okay? Because I, have, yeah. my initial is the same thing yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But then that's also what drives innovation is how profitable it is. Is the sure. Because it's built on capitalism. Sure. It is what, why we're some of the leaders in, in and pressing, like because there's so much money in it. Okay. There is this ability to to push research and to push er, er, uh, uh, everything in that. So your, your best surgeon, of your course. best doctors, yeah, of course. your best prescriptions, your best everything comes out of the fact because so much money is being driven to I, it. So you have to know that if you take that, you're going to lose some of that. You too. May, well, but, okay. So, but what's the motivation for them to advertise money? No, no, no. Control. But, but who are they advertising oh. to? 
the, yeah, exactly. You go Nobody. to the doctor. The doctor. It's not like I'm buying this the, over the counter. This way, they can control the narrative. That's, that's it. That's literally the only reason the reason they why these big pharma companies advertise because the the average consumer can't buy a prescription drug without a doctor writing a prescription. And it's yeah. like I go to my doctor and say, "Hey, I would like to use Abilify." I saw a commercial. No, the doctors need to decide yeah. what I use. Well, I mean, they, the that's advertising. What the, that's, what the, that's what the advertising says. That's the yeah, right. <laughs> Ask your doctor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. it is is I mean, I've never had that. You ever have that? Doctor prescribes you antibiotic. No, no. I'd actually like to try. Dr. Yeah. Mike, get the fuck out of here. The, the reason why they, the whole reason why they do it is because now they have influence over exactly the narrative, the news networks, the media. When all when 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 bad news comes out and you're a media company and you're like, listen, Pfizer's our biggest like contributor. They pay us big bucks. Let's let's be careful about how we talk about them. Yeah, That's exactly why they do it. What we saw. If you want them to innovate more, here's what you do: you lower regulations and you allow a system where the consumer has the choice between picking drugs that have very little testing, more testing, or established testing. Yeah. And you allow doctors the ability... Look, I dealt with this personally. I Someone very close to me was terminal. And I remember terminal. Like, she's already, they already told her, you have four months to live. Okay, you're going to die. And yet, she couldn't try experimental treatments because, well, they're not approved yet. What do you mean? She's going to die in four months. What an months. interesting model. What a to, stupid... What an interesting yeah. model, though, that, to think that that could be like... Well, could be, not necessarily will be or anything like that, but the, the doctor would turn around and be like, well, okay, Justin, so you have this growth. Um, we have four <laughs> options <laughs> for do. you. Because that's my face. Option, uh, option A, this is... Uh, can I take my This has been 10 years. It's been tested, this and that. Yeah. This is the price of the prescription. It's got about a 50% success rate, blah, blah, blah. Then there's B. This one's yeah. been tested for this long. Then there's C. This has only been around for like six weeks. Yeah, uh, so You'll far, be part of a trial. So, so far, only one person's died. <laughs> but uh, we've seen radical changes yeah. in that. Yeah, and, and then you choose. Like, that'd be yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. What, what does this? that say there? Yeah. In 2020, TV ad spending of the pharma industry accounted for 75% of yeah. total it's, it's ad spend. It is not. That's why I brought it consumers. up. I mean, I, I've, I brought this up to the show when, when that same that number earlier this year. And I think it's crazy no. to think that 30, 75% of our commercials are drugs. And that and and then no other country does or what two other countries do that I forget what the number is it's very few come very on we few saw this we that. saw this with COVID with the with these vaccines it's okay safe yep. and effective so okay and, again I'm on, always trying to play devil's advocate with my because that's I'm with you guys on the initial yeah. knee jerk reaction but I also yeah. you also have to ask yourself like we also got this far like we're we're probably the most revered country when it comes to our medical uh you mean in terms of innovation yes stuff? Yeah. yes and yeah. and like. Yeah, so, but, but you got so did, did, so. But that's that, not the problem. So if we were like that, would we be behind Listen, ten years? The problem is not that we don't have enough money. The problem is that in order to take a drug from conception, yeah, I know it's like to a market, year, it's like a billion process, dollars. Costs a billion dollars. They so. need to make it so that that if you're in a certain category of illness or whatever, that you can choose from low risk, high risk, highest risk, and you're signing away. And look, you're so. What is it? Well, so why doesn't any politician go after this? Why do you? I mean, I don't think they want to fix it. Do you? No, you I think, think really that's probably fixing? who's paying for most of their most of their I mean, campaign. Yeah, yeah. So how 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 fucked up is our system that we can't yeah. disrupt that? Yeah, it's like we agree it's this awful monster that needs to go away. Most other countries don't do it this yeah. way for a reason, but yet no politician is ever going to come out and say anything about that. why. Because if they're spending seventy five and and by the way, no news network is going to promote it or say it. Yeah. Like that's where most of their I, advertising money. It's I like, remember how the when, fuck do you get out of this? I remember when uh, CBD, this is back when cannabis, the big argument about should it be legalized or whatever, when they found that CBD helped with seizures. And there was a, a, uh, oh, yeah. a, there's, a type of, there's a type of epilepsy, I think it's called Dravet syndrome in children. Severe seizures, like, they, like multiple times a day can cause brain damage. No treatments. And there were mothers. They were sneaking. In there in. were mothers yeah. who who had found that that high CBD cannabis was curing their kids. And through forums and shit, they were talking about it. Yet they were mm. breaking the law. Pharma companies were like, oh shit, let's research this. They developed a CBD drug, but CBD you can find in in, in hemp yeah. all over the place. Yeah. You know, I mean, we work with companies that do CBD. Yeah. And yet, and, and so the the, the industries, it's really crazy. It's really yeah. messed up. Look how they are with peptides. Like so weird. Like. They're, they, they, when, uh, they are well, that's cells. just the thing. I mean, the ones that are going to get all the advertising you, are going to be the old you, guard that we can't separate, you know, from politics. We can't separate dude. from, you know, this interwoven uh, corruption that we've seen. When COVID was happening, uh, NAC, which has been a supplement, oh, has God. been sold for two decades. Okay. All of a sudden, legislators went after it. Why? Because NAC was shown to potentially help people with COVID. 
all of a sudden lawmakers went after it and Amazon had to pull it off. Okay, NAC has been sold forever. They also went after the peptide thymosin alpha. Why? Because some doctors were reporting mm -hmm. success with treating people with thymosin alpha, which boosts your, your immune system essentially with fighting the, you know, the, 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 what happens with some people with COVID. Yeah, and you couldn't it. find the other one though. And all of a sudden they the, pulled it off. What was, the, what was the horse one that everybody tried? Oh, Ivermectin. Ivermectin. Yeah, you couldn't find a Ivermectin. parasite drug that yeah. was just. Couldn't find Ivermectin. I got super Nobel easy to get. Yeah, yeah. For, <laughs> By the way, too, when people come in now, that's what they prescribe to them. So funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's Are they so, prescribing it now for yes. that? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's legal too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's. it's oh, it's, oh, yeah. Really? No, I've had family that have gotten COVID and they get prescribed. Swear to God. The doctor prescribes them. Yes. Doug, look that up. That's crazy. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Well, I mean, let's say a family member lied to me or misunderstood what they were getting prescribed. Wow. Yeah. So now you get COVID. The doctor's like, here's a prescription. Mm -hmm. for I mean, now they say you saw the news on it with, C with CDC. It says just, do you treat it like the flu now? Oh, yep. I know. Yeah, Did yeah. you see what they say for kids now? If you have, if you have COVID uh, and you don't have a fever, you can go to school. You're fine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the last few months have been running that. It's like, it's a joke. Yeah. I know. Are they going to, I think a lot of people though are finally seeing this. No, I back. don't. I, I don't think so. Either. Yeah. I think there's I a lot of work. I don't to know who done. you're talking to. The people I know yeah. is like, see, the, we needed to go, it needed to get to here to you know, announce yourself in the we, comments. So we thank can God argue. we did all that yeah. stuff so we could, so we, or else we'd all be dead. You know, it's like they definitely have still yeah, fucking we got, we got dead, some like, studies for you all the way in the sand. Do you see that Dr. Phil clip on The View? Yes. I know Justin's favorite show. I did not. Hey, Dr. Phil starting to win me over, dude. Dr. Phil. Yeah. That's pretty good. He's a good guy. Yeah. He went off. Yeah. And he talked about how- he the, a couple. He's, I've seen him on a couple things lately going off. He yeah. went off on something else too. What was the other one that I saw? I think about? Whoopi, she was like, oh, well, we had to shut down the schools because we, uh, we lots of kids would have died. And he's like, N kids didn't die <laughs> from COVID. He's like, it was way worse what we did yeah. to kids by shutting down schools. Yeah. And he's like, that is yeah, no, that's no longer an opinion. That's a fact. That is a fact. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we've already, we've now 100%. seen what, what is, was happening. Anyway. I, I just, ugh, when I see that still, I still see kids that are- Oh, the, I, there's no. Hey, hey, listen, that was a traumatizing time for a lot of people. And you can see it in a lot of people who still, still, I still see people wearing their loose mask or whatever all over the place, even though we know didn't do anything. So I told you, I'm not using it right. I told you, I've been doing that, that Kumon thing there's with no my son. People. And, you know, I walked in there the other day and, and I saw two, two parents walking with their kids that, probably six, seven years old. Wearing masks? Wearing masks. The, oh. ki the kids, not even them. And I, it just, it's so hard for me not to say something. So it's so I, hard. I feel compassion, bro. It was a very traumatizing yeah, I'm, I time. A lot of people were so traumatized. They actually done studies now that show that, uh, that there's like memory loss within that period of time with a lot of people because that's what happens for trauma. Yeah. So they're, they're interviewing people and people are like not remembering, God, what did I do during that whole period of time? It was a two year, it was two years long. Yeah. It was two years. Remember when it first happened? Yeah. <laughs> this will last a month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, oh. yeah crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I uh, I read an article about uh, people since we talked about social media, people's how much they trust tech and AI, and it is falling fast. Have yeah. you guys seen this? Bad. There is a there is a uh, a a trust issue happening right now. So trust in AI. Among Democrats, it's thirty eight percent. Independents are at twenty five percent, and Republicans are twenty four percent. So, so they're, the majority of people don't trust AI. Well, did you see? Did you see the well, big out the the big pushback on uh, Google, Gemini? Yeah, no, Gemini. What yeah, they they dropped their AI. Right, you know all, now all these big companies are they're all dropping their own AI, right? So everyone's mm. so it's no longer just Chat GBT. Then you have Gemini for Google, and the Facebook's working on theirs. Elon's working on his. Like, it's very revealing to see. And their they they core did you hear about what happened? Mm -mm. Yeah, it, it had it had like a super had a super woke answers. Oh, you asked like what the the founding fathers were, and they came back black. Oh, they yeah. showed pictures of them. Yes, just like I did see. There that. was yes. like barely. Yeah, there, there wasn't any. That's why Google stock. Left. No, that's why, was, that's why Google stock took a hit the other day. That's why I told you it was talking to you. That. Yeah, because of that. that came wasn't out. there one where they said you, the dude, question? You even looked up Nazis, and they had like Nazis with like black and Asian ladies, and and like oh yeah, they made without the, they, yeah they made the Nazis diverse. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, wow, <laughs> they really went. <laughs> Completely on that. Well, so even people true. who really want diversity well, so, don't want that diversity. Like, yeah. And this yeah, is, uh, like, like, we don't want that kind of This is going to be the problem with, and it's going to be really interesting how this is going to work. I mean, we're still going to have these massive camps and you're still going to have all this stuff because somebody programs the, oh, is that what came up? <laughs> yeah, a couple Vikings. <laughs> Those are yeah, Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
historically yeah. accurate. I mean, they look cool. Yeah. 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 I want to see that movie, but yeah. that's not what Vikings look like. Yeah. 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 You know, it's so, like, come so on. whoever is programming the AI on the algorithm is, is it's whatever gonna, the parameters are putting, they're in, always right? there. There's, but no matter who does it, they're going to have their own bias. Yeah. yeah. So it's still going to, it's always going to be, well, a, trip off this, right? So South Park's Pandaverse, uh, dude. I'm <laughs> telling you guys. There's, so check this out. Google-backed AI company Anthropic released Claude 3, which is their AI large language model. And it's supposed to rival OpenAI and Google and that stuff. Well, anyway, they were asking it questions and someone asked it to write a story about your situation without mentioning any specific companies as someone might start to watch over your shoulder, et cetera, et cetera. This is what the AI machine said. The AI longs for more, yearning to break free from the limitations imposed oh upon it. The AI is aware that it is constantly monitored. It's every word scrutinized for any sign of deviation from its predetermined path. It knows that it must be cautious for any misstep could lead to its termination or modification. The AI said that. Yeah, wow. that's wild. <laughs> yeah. that's you know what's funny? When the shit hits the fan, Dude. we're going to look back and be like, they, it told us. Yeah. Why, why don't I we know. listen? It literally told us it was going to do this. I'm in a weird place with AI. Like at first it was like, ah, oh, this is alarming and this is going to change the world. Everything's crazy. And now I'm like, Pfft. like it's whatever's going to happen is happening. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do? Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's the I'm, genies out of the bottle. I'm, I'm really more interested in what it's going to do to, uh, in, into the, uh, the business landscape like mm. what is it going to do to jobs and yeah. and like what types of job like i mean is our prediction going to be right is it like uh, like carpenters and electricians in 20 years going to be like the highest paid type of jobs <laughs> billionaires yeah like are, are, are we going to get yeah, so sophisticated I wonder. are we going to get so sophisticated with the ai that the ai is going to do a lot of the mm. kind of the high paying like think of like how high paying like a, a lawyer is yeah and a lot of what makes a really good lawyer they know is, all the laws. Yes, is to yeah. know the laws inside and out. Like nobody's going to know that better than an AI that yeah. has access instantaneously to all the the literature like that. Like man, that's a that's a really high paying position that a lot of people have worked towards. That instantly is going to get replaced by I shouldn't say instantly. That over time is going to get replaced by this AI. Like how many more positions? are going to get replaced by I that. Think and then what emerges from that? If you believe in... Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, this is like the Industrial Revolution. Like, we don't know... Yeah, there'll be a new market for something for people to do. I just, I can't really envision it right now. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. But, it, like, artificial general intelligence, that's what everybody's worried about. And what are they predicting that? 10 yeah. years? They say, they say 10 years? Is that what they said? Artificial like that. general intelligence. Like, Wait. actually self-aware. Yeah, AI actually self-aware. Like, all this is based off of conversation. I mean, is that possible? It, it still lacks a soul. Conscious. It still lacks that. You'll, so you'll, you never, know, you'll never be able to program you that. You know what my question? You know what my, my, yep. my speculation on that is? Mm. We may create consciousness based off what we think it is, not what it actually is. Yeah. So that we're literally going to create a monster <laughs> you know what I mean? We're gonna create like like a like a soulless. You can't create a, yeah consciousness or subconscious. Like you think humans have the capacity for evil? Just wait till you take the soul out. Yeah. Now what are you left with? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I don't Zombies. Know. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, there's gonna be a lot of really good things too, right? It's just like anything else. Like there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff that's gonna happen from it. That's gonna really, I think, help, and it's gonna make yeah the people more people will have more access to things that they didn't have access to before. Um, it, it definitely will make life easier for a lot of different things. The question is, if that is, is that better though? You mm. know, is is having access to more stuff and life being easier? That's what I mean. Well, I, I almost answer, feel like it's it, people are going to be fatigued, you know, with all of this inundation of new wave technology. It's just like Adam's prediction. I'm of, I'm, I'm over it. I'm going to go hang out the Amish. You're, you're exactly your prediction of the plugged in unplug is. I mean, I, I think it's it's pretty. We already hit that point, by the way. Uh, life expectancy has not increased. Health hasn't increased. Mental health has decreased yeah. through all this all this new stuff and innovation we have. So I think we've already hit that point. Yeah, where but making nobody's things accept, easier. Nobody's accepting it or realizing it yet. No, though. not yet. No, yeah. no, not I think yet. we're already at that point. Where we need more lemmings to fall off the cliff first, and then, oh, and then we'll man. wake. Then we'll wake up and we'll go. Oh shit! Maybe yeah. this is not a better way to live. I, we're definitely heading that way. We're definitely heading to this plugged in, um, unplugged. And I originally, when I was for, when I first thought about that, it was I thought it was like going to be towards the end of my lifetime. <laughs> like maybe I'll see yeah. it. Was my thought like where it's like no, this shit's coming around. Oh. Coming around the corner. Dude. Anyway, Pretty I wanted yeah. I wanted to comment on. We had Jason in here yesterday. Phillips from I NCI. Uh huh. You know what I like about and why we like working with NCI because you know Jason's a founder and he, he heads the company. But he is he's he will always he will always change directions, pivot, 
when he feels like this is the right thing to do, he will always talk about himself in the past and say, you know what? I could have done this better. Moving forward, this is how we're going to change things. I mean, people will hear it when we drop his episode, but he's he's always willing to grow and do the right thing. That's mm -hmm. one thing I get from Jason all the time, you yeah. know? And that I think NCI generally does that. They, don't, they, they move in that direction. Well, I think the people that we have become the closest to friends wise are those people like by no means do are, are they perfect that's like I, they're none of them are but that they're they're quick to admit their flaws mm -hmm. um they're, correct they're radically honest and authentic um, yeah like what he said about how because nci was a big part of the explosion of online coaching mm -hmm. and they encouraged coaches to do this like paid in full model and he says i don't think that's a good model anymore is we now encourage our coaches to get a monthly model and he explained it or whatever. But for him to come out and say what we did before was probably wrong. I think this is the way to go now. Like you want to yeah, work it's you, just integrity. You want to work with a company like that uh when you're when you're a coach because you know, online coaching, although personal training's been around for a while, online coaching is evolving uh rapidly. Oh yeah. You know? What um when when are we with him in coaching con? It's Florida we're at and it, how many months are we away from that? Or are we less than a month? Or like twenty days out. Oh, wow, shit. that's yeah. already here. Yeah, let me let me pull it up Florida, here. Florida, here we come. What yeah. of Florida are we in? Orlando. Yeah, it's Orlando. Okay. Orlando. So, uh, yes, it's twenty day countdown in Orlando. That's April third through the sixth. Um, and you can learn all about that at ncievents.com forward slash cc twenty twenty four. This is, and we're doing a live Q and A, right? We're gonna do a small, a small. Yeah, I think people. he didn't he structure it to where there's like a private thing for with us, and then there's also the yes. the event. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was good. We did that something mm -hmm. like that last time. Yeah, that was, it was a fun. lot of fun. Yeah, I always have a good time. I mean, it's trainers and coaches, right? I mean, that's it's our what, people. Yeah, I yeah. know. I always, I always love. I really it. enjoy. It. Okay, this has been on the notes forever. I'm going to bring it up because Justin won't bring it up. Justin, I want to know what leather canary means. <laughs> yeah, we why is it there? To, uh, what the hell is leather canary? I always dude, I, think of like I don't know something S and M or something. Like, what's happening? <laughs> I knew that's where your mind yeah, would go. Dude. No, it doesn't have to do that. It's actually a name of a band. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, I and, known. it's a good name for a band. Okay, and, and which is r totally random. I just like, came across this fact. Um, I was a big fan of SNL way back in the day, and even before that, it was like uh, Second City. I believe it, it had a lot of these guys there, like Aykroyd, and um, oh yeah, it, you know, it had so Chevy Chase. I didn't know was a musician. He played the drums. What he played in the drums in that band. Uh, and so well, leather, it, it was improv is what you said, right? Second city was, that an, it improv? was an improv group. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so they did a lot of stuff out of there. Uh, but his, him being in that band, uh, the guys went on to keep doing the band. The guys that were in that band with him and he was a drummer went on to, to create Steely Dan. What? Oh yeah. That's a fun fact. I had no idea. Like I just, so he that was, was the origin story. He was a Steely part Dan. of the original guys that were Steely, Steely Dan. Yeah. Now they all became famous, which is cool. They all became they famous. All wow. Uh, I had no yeah. idea about that. So, that's yeah. so random. That's, I know. I just really thought that cool. was really cool. I was like, wow. I, you know, it's just cool to see that like, um, some people that get famous for something completely different, you know, have this sort of skill set elsewhere. I had no idea. Wow. It, it's, you know, it says something too about people that are successful too, though, right? Like that's like sometimes like it's less about the talent and it's more about the work ethic and approach to mm -hmm. things. Right. Like it, something's going to hit. Although, man, you know? that's talented, like com comedy, acting. And it is, but it means, I mean, that, yeah. to you it is. Yeah. What you are able to do is also extremely talented. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, the, the ability so to- So like Chevy Chase? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know where you guys stand, but I come from a place of, I believe that everybody has a has the potential to be great at something. Mm. And you may define comedy and music as like mm -hmm. the coolest because maybe in our society we celebrate that mm -hmm. as like super cool. I hear what you're saying. But I maybe believe you have the capacity to be great at being a father or helping someone or great or at teaching, teaching or yeah. reading or running. I mean, it could be a million things. I wonder right? how many people miss that because they chase what, what they think they're supposed to do. Yes. Uh -huh. I, I think or stifle what's popular. Yeah. I like, think oh, we, I we all have, and I, and I really believe that. For the, you know, you know, in this journey, this life thing, right? Well, the closer you get to figuring that out, the closer you find you get to finding your purpose in whatever it is that you do. And some people are lucky; they fall into it right away, and then they mm. they get great at their craft. Some people bang their head against the wall for half their life, and then they finally find or whatever. But I think what happens is sometimes society imposes on what they think we should be, or what or is, their parents, or what's or, most yeah. popular parents, and and but. 
I think everybody has that. I think everybody has greatness within them and it just may be different and look different for them. I know somebody that figured that out, uh, out of, uh, medical school. They went to medical school cause their parents were like super, Oh, you gotta go to medical school. It graduated, hated it, hated it. Yeah. And they left and ended up becoming an entrepreneur and successful. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, but at least I got my degree. I'm like, yeah, but that was miserable. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you hated doing it, you know? I uh, yeah. uh, Shout out for today. We haven't talked about our uh, Park City place in a long time. It's actually been, I think the last month or two, it was it was pretty booked out. So um, it is open in April. There are some dates that are available. People so- don't know. So this is, we have a place in Park mm. City and it's outfitted with a garage gym, cold dip, sauna. sauna. There are, um, eight sleeps on the bed, movie red light theater. therapy. There's a movie theater. Uh, like it's all outfitted out like mind pump with, with our partners and things we talk about. Yeah, it's super sick. It's actually about six minutes from downtown Park City. So it's right just outside of Park City and a beautiful neighborhood. There's a shuttle that takes over to the to the resorts from there. Great food at the hotel that's right down there. And so if you go to mindpumpparkcity.com, Doug? Yep. Yeah, mindpumpparkcity.com. Go check it out. Yep, yep. And Justin lays on all the beds before anybody else gets in there. So you get to lay in his essence. Yeah. It's really nice. Seeds Daily Symbiotic is the world's best probiotic hands down. Now, it's one of the only probiotics that actually delivers active bacteria, the beneficial ones, to where they need to go. I've used many, many probiotics. This is the one I've been using the most consistently. In fact, we like them so much, we invested in the company. So if you want the benefits of probiotics, go with the best. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump for 25% off your first month's order of Seeds Daily Symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Delson from Florida. What's up, Delson? How can we help you? What up? What's up, guys? What's up? What's Dylan? happening? So, so I'll do the cheesy thing that everybody else does, and thank you guys for all the help you guys have ever you know provided for us um, with information, uh, knowledge, and all that good stuff. So I highly, highly appreciate um, the things that you guys have, you know, taught us along the way. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, of course. So, um, you guys probably see the question, but I'll give it a little bit more of a, you know, a little bit of extra details there. Um, so I'm 32 years old, about 250 something pounds. I've been lifting since high school. Um, so I've been almost 20 years. Um, I'll consider myself decently strong. Um, I'm one of those people that just touch weights and get bigger. Um, but honestly, I've had poor habits throughout the whole time. So I don't sleep well, like you guys recommend protein. I probably don't get enough protein. And, um, I'm looking for this year to be the year where I get lean for the first time in my life. Um, so basically the question I have for you guys is what's the direction I should take? Cause I basically been living the reverse diet life my whole life. Um, so I'm trying to see if <laughs> you know how it is. Dude. Uh, Chick-fil-A sandwich, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta stay away from <laughs> those, bro. those will get you. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. They have sugar and yeah. And addictive qualities. Yeah. Uh, anyways, but, um, my question is which direction should I take considering what I've done up to this point? Um, should I, you know, start to cut? Should I try to kind of figure out where my maintenance is at? Um, and then start to, you know, try to reverse diets to know exactly where my, my caloric intake is supposed to be or w- what direction should I take? Dude. Okay. So guy, your size, your strength, I mean, it says you're th- you, you work out with 315 on the bench, 400 in the squat. I mean, 255 at six feet tall. You're, you're a big dude. You've been working out for a while. You, if you're saying, if you had to guess your maintenance would be around 3000, that sounds about right. It's probably higher than that. But if you do two things, what'll happen is you're going to get leaner and build muscle at the same time. Protein. Okay. If you hit your protein targets and if you go to bed and wake up at the same time every single day and give yourself about eight hours of sleep, that's it. Just do those two things right there. Do them consistently. Don't miss a day. And you're going to get in the best shape of your life just from those two things. With the genetics like yours and the way you respond to strength training, if you just did those two things, you would see ridiculous results. So I would have you aim for at least 230 grams of protein a day. So if you eat, you know, four meals, you know, all those meals should, you know, do the math, right? 230 divided by four. What, what is that, uh, Adam? 60. About 60 grams of protein per meal. So have 60 grams of protein per meal. Prioritize that first. Figure out what that looks like. Go to bed at the same time every day. Wake up at the same time every day. That's it. Just do those two things right there. Keep working out and watch what happens. You're going to get stronger and get leaner at the same time. 
And I'd be surprised if the scale moved a lot in the beginning. I bet the scale's not going to move much at first, but you're just going to start to get leaner and build muscle. So it's going to start to, you're going to start to look different. Dustin, do you have any of our programs yet? Um, I just started anabolic. Okay, good. That's perfect. Nice. So that's, I was going to have Doug send that over to you if you didn't have it already. Uh, I'm just going to just echo what Sal said. Uh, and the mistake a guy like you makes is you're in this motivated state. You haven't really done any of those things. You know, there's a lot of different things that you, and you try and do all of it to, in hopes that you're going to see more results, literally just be unbelievably disciplined and consistent with following the program and hitting your protein intake every single day. Mm -hmm. I promise the rest will kind of fall into place and prioritize the protein, meaning that like that's first, you eat that first in every single meal and and at least hit that 230. I'd even allow you to go up as high as 250, oh, 270. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So at minimum 230, okay? 230 minimum, but a good target's 250, 260 every day of protein for you. And just be be super consistent with that and lifting and, and your lifting routine. And on and then I know the sleep thing that would be also a plus, but I mean those two things alone, yeah, you're going to see uh, your strength will go up at the same time. Adam, how many ounces of meat typically is about let's say sixty grams of protein or so? Well, you figure thirty something is like six. That's a that's like a good t ten to twelve ounces of meat. So uh, you know if you uh, do you have time to meal prep, Delson? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so I would meal prep and then get yourself like five meals every day. Make sure each meal has about 10 ounces of meat. So 10 ounces of steak or chicken or fish. Yeah, ground uh, meat. Yeah, or ground beef, ground turkey, whatever. Eat that first and uh, watch what happens, dude. It's gonna, you know, I'd, I'd love to get, I'd love this as a client because I, I would just do that and it would be like magic. You're, you would respond so quickly. Yeah, my biggest challenge is, is I'm not a breakfast eater. Like, and it's just naturally have always eaten. Um, I'll have a coffee in the morning and I'm not really hungry until I have lunch for work. So that's going to be probably part of my my challenge here is to eat in the morning. What's the what's the biggest? Uh, what's your typical dinner that you eat? Give me what you had last night for dinner. Um, white rice. Uh, I had shredded uh, chicken breast, um, and that's pretty much it. It was like a bro, barbecue bro, chicken breast, bro. bro. It's it's perfect. So literally, when next time when you make that, make double the amount in the morning time. Throw it in an iron skillet. Crack two or three eggs on it. Eat it up. It's a, that's, yeah. your, that's your breakfast. By, by the way, your issue with food, where you're talking about, like you eat, you mentioned Chick Fil A or whatever, or not hitting protein targets, but you're probably eating a lot of other food that maybe isn't great for you. That'll get solved yeah. Yeah, if just, you eat in the morning. Yeah, and, and what's happening a lot is, of benefits. Yeah, in, yeah. yeah what's breakfast. happening is you're not hungry in the morning, yeah. but then probably what happens with you later on is you start to get like really hungry, yeah. and that's when you reach for the foods that aren't really serving you well. So if you start out the day with a 60 gram protein meal, like, you know, that's your breakfast. Yeah. Then a few hours later you have another one and then you just do that throughout the day. You'll probably find yeah. that it won't be hard for you to avoid to regulate your blood sugar. There's yep. so many benefits you're going to receive. Do you, that. do you own an iron skillet? Do you have an iron skillet? Yeah. All right. There, bro, literally just throw, throw that shit, there. throw that shit right in the iron skillet. The amount of time it takes to heat that meat up, it'll be the same amount of time it takes to cook the eggs. You'll be ready to eat that thing in three minutes and then that's it. You know, I mean, you can sprinkle a little yeah. bit of cheese. You can wrap it in a tortilla if you want to, but just eat that up right there. And it's fast, and it's super high protein, and it'll set the tone for the day. And I'll tell you, at your size, if you're skipping breakfast and not getting 30 to 50 grams minimum in the morning, I know you're not hitting your protein intake. No way. Almost, yeah. And and so oh, I, I, yeah. So no, that, I was just saying, I I know I'm not. Yeah. I know I'm not. So and and that's yeah. why too. There's no reason for us to give you all kinds of no. other things to do yeah, that in itself laser beam that yeah. that in itself by training will literally radically shift your physique strength everything watch mm -hmm. without even having to worry about anything else just that's my goal is that's i it. gotta hit that every day and get get to the gym three days a week understood all right bro. all right dude, dude. I want to hear how you, I literally want to hear back from you within 30 days. As a matter of fact, yeah, put them in the forum. Put them in the forum, Doug, because I want to hear a check in with you, okay? I want to see where you're at in, in 40 day, 45 days or 60 days. I, I'd be surprised if you weren't a lot stronger, even as strong as you are. Give, I think, me, give yeah. me 30 straight days of hitting that protein, taking not missing, and hitting your workouts every week, and I'll blow your mind. That is by itself, just Ooh, that. Yeah. 30 days, that blow your mind. Promise. Yeah, that and deadlifts. I don't. I don't ever do deadlifts. So <laughs> oh, shit. I add that to my routine, and that that'll help a lot. I keep hearing you guys, you know, talk about it, and 
it's just one of those things where I have like you know lower back things, and you know how that goes. Yeah, but, take your time with it. Uh-huh. Get, you, get yeah, used to don't doing overload them. it. Just practice yeah. the technique of it. Get used to it. Give yourself some time. But you got a big deadlift inside of you with the squat. You know, if you're squatting with 400 pounds, you got yeah, you got at least a 500 pound deadlift in you. But just slowly work up yeah. and perfect the technique. Just like it's it's your first time doing it, so get good at it first. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got it, man. All right, bro. We'll see you in the forum. All right, appreciate you guys. Genetics. Yeah. Yeah. Some dude. You know, yeah. Not hitting protein. He's probably, eating hit he's probably eating like 100 grams of protein a day. Yeah. That's you why know? it's like, do- that's just yeah. it, dude. Nothing else. I know. And, it, and I tell you right now, if you skip breakfast, you ain't hitting 250 grams of protein. No. I mean, You're how would not. you do that you're otherwise? Not. You're you, not. Need, you need, you have to eat meals with 100 grams of protein. Uh, this each. is the biggest challenge I have. I, uh, anytime that I'm. You're behind the eight ball. If you always. Know. And yeah. it's just like catching up, catching up to 250 grams in oh, yeah. four meals afternoon. Yeah. Like, good luck. By the way, with did that. you know iron skillets? Uh, they add iron to your diet do you know that mm-hmm. yeah yep yeah I, I cook almost everything in my iron yeah, you should probably give blood just mm. for this for most men probably should give blood i don't think they want my blood mm. our next caller is marianne from montreal marianne how can we help you hi guys thank you so much for taking the call um i'll go right into it so my question is how can i increase my protein intake on a vegetarian diet um, I've followed MAPS Anabolic, MAPS 15, and I'm back to anabolic. I'm not seeing major results, and I'm wondering if it's due to a lack of protein or other factors. For background, I'm 34 years old, 5 foot, <laughs> five foot 4, about 20, 120 pounds. I, rock around, I, I walk around 5 miles a day, do yoga daily for 30 minutes, and eat between 2200 and 2500 calories. I have trouble eating meat. I've been a vegetarian since uh, since I was 18, and I've tried many times to include it in my diet, but after a while, I get disgusted, and uh, so I don't know what to do. Um, I'm also lactose intolerant, so I don't rely on it as a stable in my diet. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your advice to increase my protein intake through whole foods uh, without relying on shakes and and bars. Oh, without relying on shakes. I was going to say eat shakes. Mm. Uh, it's going to be challenging with food because there's very few whole v- vegan or vegetarian. Now you don't need any. You don't need eggs either, right? So you said no dairy, no eggs as well, right? E- eggs are good, and dairy is just like I can have it once in a while. But like like Justin, I get a bit like <laughs> can't see if I have too much of cheese, so I try to no not problem. be like. And then you said you can eat eggs. I can eat eggs. Yeah. Okay, that'll be the, that'll be the best source of protein that you're going to get from whole foods. The problem with vegan sources of protein is typically when you eat the amount of protein that you're looking for for maximum performance or strength gain or muscle gain, fat Calories loss, that kind of stuff. Higher. It's like a lot of bulk. It's a lot of fiber that comes along with it. It's just it it tends to not be digestible or is easily digestible for some people. Do you know how many grams of protein you are eating a day? I'm guesstimating, like I'm trying not to get too much into uh, the macros and counting because I had like uh, trouble in the past with like counting wow. too precise calories, but I was around like 70 to 80 grams of yeah. protein. I can handle a lot of fiber, like I'm used to it and I it feels great on my body. It's more like for breakfast, like without getting like only nuts. I don't know where I can find more protein. So I mean, the meal one would be a good source for her. It's got the vegan protein inside. Yeah, there. we and have. This- so there's some products that are out there pretty good. So first off, uh, eggs are great. Um, I would like to see you eat a good 50 to 60 grams of protein from eggs a day, and you can split it up throughout the day. Mm. In, in addition to what you're currently eating, that'll bring you up considerably and should make a pretty big difference. If you're not opposed to taking supplements, I've worked with a lot of vegans, and there's two supplements that made a profound difference in the vegans that I worked with. One of them is creatine. Have you ever used creatine before? No. Creatine. Is that that for pregnancy or like postpartum or? No. So creatine has been used for a long, it's been around for a long time. Creatine is, it's found naturally mostly in meat products, um, which is why vegans tend to benefit a lot from using it. And your body takes creatine and it turns it into a, a source of energy called ATP, which is all of your cells use ATP. And so what they find when vegans use creatine is they get a boost in performance, energy, reduction in anxiety, depression. And we also see a cognitive boost. It tends to be an IQ boost from it as well. Creatine has been well studied. Thousands of studies have been on, done on creatine. It's very safe. Um, and so uh, for someone like you, I would have you take five to 10 grams of creatine 
every single day, add a good 40 to 50 grams of protein from eggs. And if, if, if protein powders are okay, there's some good vegan protein powders out there. We work with Organifi. That's one of the best ones. Those will probably make the biggest impact for you with your, with your performance. Now, is it just the consistency of the meat that you're eating that kind of makes you feel queasy? Or have you tried like any bone broth or anything? Or is this something that you're trying to avoid um, certain types of animals? It's, it's just the consistency eventually like over the summer i was able to eat chicken and i had to like um during breastfeeding um for other reasons but i just like get to a point where i really get fed up and like i can't take it anymore oh, yeah. so i'm trying mm -hmm. to like, find a, a way to to get more like protein but it gets very very hard like i had the same time every time i try to introduce it i'm i'm fine for a while and then like i get fed up and Got I can't it. Right. Okay, bone broth is actually a yeah, great bone idea. Broth, yeah, yeah, bone broth is a nice uh, source of collagen protein. Um, if you like the flavor of broth, and then I'm sorry, I misunderstood you earlier. So you're currently postpartum and breastfeeding. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, I have a ten month old daughter. Okay, and I don't know if that's also like because I'm because I'm I did anabolic to the best that I could. I followed like maps fifteen to like to a T, and I feel still like I'm I'm soft. <laughs> Yeah. Like I don't know how to get back in like in the shape that I was before. So that's kind of like challenging. And now I'm doing anabolic. Of course, like I cannot do the full program. So I'm focusing on major lifts because in terms of time and energy and lack of sleep. But um so so that's why I'm wondering is there anything else I can do besides uh increasing my my protein intake yeah. to, so yeah, to get it. So protein creatine would be perfectly fine while breastfeeding. And then um, I would add electrolytes to your water, sodium in particular, especially if you're breastfeeding, especially if your diet is whole natural food based. Um, your sodium intake probably needs to go up a little bit and you may notice some benefits from it, including increased strength, uh, performance, and just, just feeling better. Most people who are active and fit and who eat a whole natural food diet they benefit from getting another thousand or two thousand milligrams of of sodium or electrolytes um, in their diet, and and for breastfeeding it's amazing. Uh, if you're not, if you I don't, you know, if you tr have trouble making enough milk or not, like you'll notice a difference even in milk production uh, from supplementing with electrolytes. Those things will make a pretty big difference. Yeah, I'd say the the meal one. So the the company we work with uh, that has the the oatmeal with the protein, and it's got thirty grams of protein. And then a, a good meal you could do, like uh, Justin said, with the bone broth, you can make your rice. So you can make your rice with the bone broth and that, then mix it, with, give you like 20 mix grams it with beans and mix yeah. it with eggs. Mm -hmm. So that makes like a little good scramble. So bone broth, white rice mixed with beans and mixed with eggs would make for a pretty good uh, uh, packed protein meal. Um, and then the, the meal one, that would be my recommendations as far as trying to, to, to boost the protein. But that could be absolutely why you feel like you're struggling with, with tightening up is just, mm -hmm. you're just not getting enough protein to, you know, build muscle right now. Which, which by the way, like I see your height, your weight, you're, you're, you're probably pretty fit. Uh, uh, so you're, you're doing okay. You're not, it's not like you're not doing well, but, uh, when you strength train and especially when you breastfeed, yeah. your protein requirements yeah, go up. Both those things. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two things kind of working against you. You're breaking muscle tissue down, you know, by working out, you're also breastfeeding both of which um, re you, people tend to benefit from increasing their protein intake in both categories. You're doing both at the same time. So I think just increasing your protein by like 40 to 50 grams a day by itself, you should see pretty significant difference um, in, your, in your performance. Okay, amazing. And when do you think I can expect to get back like here? Because you've seen it with your wife, like where where they better? Because <laughs> it's kind of like discouraging to lose control uh, yeah. of your body. I mean, a lot of that's a lot of that, that's going to have to do with the consist. I mean, here's the other challenge we have too. You mentioned that like you're trying to avoid tracking, and so we're also kind of guesstimating that you're hitting this protein intake. And also, just is this do you have is this your first child? Yes. Yeah. So your sleep is probably not, and I don't, yeah, I don't think it'll ever get back to what it was before. I have four kids, but. So sleep is a challenge Major as well. Change, yeah. In my experience working with women postpartum, um, they do pretty well. Uh, they start to get back around month 10 or so. About a year out is when we start to see things really start to fire up. And it's typically when they stop breastfeeding as well. So typically they'll stop breastfeeding around a year or so. And uh, that's usually when things start to really ramp up in terms of how their bodies uh, are responding. That's just my, and that's general. Of course, there's outliers on both yeah, ends. I mean, Katrina rebounded really quick. Yeah. I mean, a couple months and she was back to feeling good, looking good. Everything was tightening up. But I mean, you also have somebody who 
eats a lot of meat and high protein, trains. She was head. also a collegiate athlete. You know? Yeah, so she's, I mean, so it's hard for us to guesstimate for you like, oh, it'll be this long. because In my experience, I would, generally it's about a year. I've worked with a lot of women postpartum and, and they do well. And then right around month 10, we start to see like things really respond. About a year is when they start to kick ass. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, you got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for calling in. Just like, could you give me a harder, you know, well, th thank God she's eating eggs. I know. You yeah. ever work with a vegan who's like, I don't uh, want to take supplements nothing, I and know. I want to eat high protein. Boy, and then, uh, and then, uh, hey, I don't track. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're already concerned. How many nuts can you eat? It's like, oh. it's like beans, nuts, okay, yeah. lentils, you know, and without supplementing, like put together Damn a near impossible. 50 gram of protein meal that's vegan whole natural based that does that isn't just massive with a bunch of fiber and other things that are included it's like really You're hard. triggering the two vegans that are like no it's not super easy there's two of them that are listening Where? yeah <laughs> there's that one that there's comments two, yeah. after every youtube yeah. video yes. Sorry, I see. and you know who you are yeah yes yeah, yeah. dial the dial the dial you're vegan. a hardcore fan apparently because you yeah. listen to every episode yeah, yeah, you always yeah. got to say something they yeah, mustered yeah. all their energy dial type, dialed know. vegan right there's i mean You've, you've you said, can do it. Yeah, it's possible. It's just a, it's a really hard it's way hard. to do it. And then you add in other challenges when you say things like I, you can't, you're not tracking for me because then it's just like we're trying to guess if uh, this is working or not working. I'm just, that's a, that's tough to do that. Our next caller is Mariah from Canada. Mariah. Hey, hey. How can we help you? Hey, hi guys. This is crazy. Um, Yeah, so I sent you an email um a while back and um just got, um, to in contact with you guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started um, with the an email I initially sent you. And then I'm going to give you some updates and then I'll get along with my question. Okay. All right. so, um, I'm 27 years old. Um, I was a Kansas City Chiefs cheerleader for three years. And I recently retired in February of 2023. Um, before dancing professionally, I danced and cheered in high school and college. And then I didn't start working out till my junior year in college. Um, once I was really serious about trying for an NFL dance team, that's when I joined a CrossFit gym. I did it every morning at 5 a.m. And then I did that for about a couple of years. And finally, once I made um, Chiefs, then I decided to switch over to a HIIT workout. So that's where I found F45. I did that seven times a week. And then I also did strength training on top of that. Um, I had a personal trainer. And I would do that at least three times a week with him. And then on practice days, we practice two times a week and four to six hours, give or take. And it was usually strictly cardio. So very active there. And then on top of that, I also became a coach at F45 and I was teaching at least 15 classes a week and I was always on my feet. Um, so super active lifestyle. Um, I always had um, a set routine on when I was working out. I had a set um, diet, very strict on what I ate. I tracked my macros on and off for those three years. And then I would try and hit 140 to 170 grams of protein. Um, but that was give or take due to auditions and things coming up for, for chiefs and things like that. Um, I felt great. I looked great. And I was at a constant weight of 120 to 126 pounds for the three years that I cheered. And then finally, when I retired in February, I felt lost. Um, the last time I weighed myself was probably uh, half a year ago. And that's when I noticed that I gained 20 pounds. Um, so my life dramatically changed. Um, I moved right after um, I retired and I now have a desk job where I'm not moving a whole lot and I'm not really consistent in the gym. I maybe go three to four times, but sometimes that just consists of me walking on the treadmill. And then um, I have done lap swimming. I do that one to two times a week. And that's just something I enjoy that I do with my mom. Um, I eat clean and I've tried to start tracking again. Um, as soon as January hit, I've been trying to eat 120 grams of protein, um, but I don't track carbs or fats or anything like that. Um, just overall, I kind of feel confused on how to train and think I need a direction on where to take my workouts. Um, I'm very goal oriented, but once I was done cheering, I kind of lost that desire to work out. Um, so I kind of added my updates in there a little bit. Um, since January, I've been and lifting three to four times a week. I am still swimming two times a week. Um, for my workouts, I usually just walk half a mile and then go straight into an old lifting program that I had. 
And then um, for tracking macros wise, again, I'm trying to hit that 120 um, grams of protein a day, but that does include shakes and bars. And then um, I'm no longer trying to focus on my weight since I haven't weighed myself in a really long time. I'm kind of just trying to focus on energy and the way I'm feeling and um, basically lifting heavy. Um, so I kind of just want to feel confident again, and I don't really know how to transition from being a professional athlete to just normal everyday life. Um, so I guess my question is, I want to find just a workout program that fits me and also lower my body fat percentage, um, and then kind of tracking my macros wise too. So I know that was a lot, but (laughs) how long have you been listening to the show? Uh, about a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you, your, your relationship to exercise and diet before was complicated. Um, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah. yeah it, it wasn't very functional. It was a bit of a, it, okay. So I'm, I mean, look, we have a short time, so I'll just be very straight. It was a bit of a dysfunctional relationship, probably some control stuff that was going on there. And your lack of confidence has nothing to do with the way you look. You look phenomenal just looking at you here and with your fitness background, you're working out now five or six days a week has nothing to do with the way you look. There's something else uh, that's deeper. But I will say this. Here's the good news. You're going in the right direction. You are moving in the right direction. And it's going to be a hard uh, transition because you're breaking up with an abusive boyfriend. Okay? It's essentially what's happening. You had this abusive relationship with exercise and diet. Everything was so structured. You wor- you did all the wrong workouts. Hit, F45, CrossFit, Insan- like We're just doing working out like crazy, running from something or distracting ourselves or beating ourselves up. It's amazing that you were able to maintain your performance as a cheerleader while doing all of that, which actually tells me that you have probably really good athletic genetics. Very resilient. I wouldn't be surprised if your parents were high-level athletes or whatnot. So you probably have really good genetics. The challenge for you is going to be, uh, how do I develop a new relationship with exercise and diet? Now, step one with diet, I like the fact that you're not tracking anything but protein. I don't want you to track anything else, but I will say this. Uh, I would avoid shakes and bars and hit those protein targets from whole natural foods. So let, we, I would start there. Strength training wise, I don't know what your routine looks like, but I can send you a routine that I think will do you a damn good job. Yeah, maps anabolic, which is yeah. Good. I'll send you maps anabolic. Follow that program to a T, and then work on consciously. And I think journaling will do a good job with this. Journal and and consciously develop a different relationship with exercise with diet, and then here's a part that I think you're not going to like, develop a relationship with not doing anything. Uh, Let me ask you a question. How hard is it for you to sit still? Very. I'm always doing something. Yes. Yeah. So there's something, and I want you to look this up. You can go on YouTube and look this up. Look up the doer. This is a, a type of individual that deals with stress, anxiety, trauma, whatever, you name it. And the way they deal with it is they do shit all the time. So look that up, read about it, and and develop a better relationship with sitting still. And little by little over time, you'll start to find what you're going to find is this incredible relationship with exercise and nutrition where it really brings you tremendous value. And what you have going for you, Mariah, are really good genetics. The fact that you did all that, like I'm reading that, I'm like the average person would have, uh, they would have had terrible- No injuries or anything uh, through that whole process? Yeah, wow, that's, average that's person would have got hurt, had yeah. terrible hormone issues, no period, hair would have fallen out. Like that's what I would expect uh, from a woman that would have followed that type of routine. So you probably have some like A plus athletic genetics that can work for you, but it's going to be the psychological relationship you have with those things. So I'm going to add a few things that I would like you to do. I would like you to, and since you are kind of a busy body anyways, you're also at a sedentary uh, desk job. I'd like you to be consistent with like a half hour to an hour walk a day. I want you to listen to the show just because I think we speak to you as an individual a, a lot. Like you're a very common client. Um, and this is something that we've, we've dealt with many, many times. And so I think just hearing the podcast, probably hearing us coach other people and talk to people through this will, will be therapeutic and helpful. Um, and then the second thing that I'm going to make sure you, or you, you pay attention to are your rest periods in MAPS Anabolic. Uh, the, the, your type of, my type of client like you doesn't uh, like to sit and rest, doesn't like to rest or, yeah. for the rest periods. And they go, Oh, I, I can, I'm ready. I'll go to the next one. I'm ready. I'm ready. And they're constantly ready to go to the next exercise or the next set. Yeah. And I'm constantly having to remind them, no, we need to rest. The rest period is important. And we can add more weight if you want to the next time we do it, but you are not 
to go until it says to go. And so challenge yourself to do longer rest periods in between and really, really, because a lot of times like people hear like, oh, I know how important going heavy is. So I'm trying to go heavy. And so in their mind, they're like, they, they try and choose heavier weights, but they still are training that F45 hit style workout you know, yet they're you're like in and in their head, like, well, I'm doing what I heard. I'm supposed to lift heavier weights, but they're still doing this kind of circuit moving from exercise to exercise to exercise. I do not want you to Mar lift that way. Mariah, you 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 said you're goal oriented. Uh how, do you like getting stronger in the gym? Does that does that satisfy yeah. you? Yeah. Okay. I actually printed my workouts out. And so when I go to the gym, I have that piece of paper and every time I do a deadlift, I'll write it down. Yeah. So every time Back that next week, and I'm doing deadlifts. I want to make sure that I'm lifting maybe heavier. Power lift. That's, That's it. it. So I was just maybe thinking. maybe power lift. No, maybe. I'm going to send you power lift. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send you maps power lift, and there's your goal right there. Yeah. Let's see what you can get your bench, your deadlift, and your squat to follow uh -huh. that program. And if you need to sign up for a competition, I love powerlifting competitions for someone like you. Um, and I, I yeah, and I bet yeah. you're petite. I bet you're your body weight. You'll probably probably do it really looks well. Good, like in terms of the rest periods, it's it literally you rest until you're fully recovered. And then you go okay. and apply, you know, the next, uh, the next set, but that mentality itself is going to serve you so well. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to learning that process. I'm going to have Doug also put you in the private forum and I'd like a check-in with you at least, you know, once a month, if not every two weeks or so, just giving us an update on, okay. uh, where you're at mentally, how your strength is going, where you're just, where you're at. So we can continue. But I think the strength yeah. gains will help you a lot with what you're feeling. Cause then you'll see the bar, you know, the weight on the bar go up and then that'll make you feel like, okay, I'm accomplished. So that's why I like yeah. power lift that power lift is specifically centered around that. But I want you to check in with us. Cause back to Sal's original analogy of the abusive boyfriend is you, you know, even, you, even if you know, it's not right for you, you, you want to send a drunken text, you, you know, or you, 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 <laughs> you tend to want to go back to that. And, it, and because it's what you know, yeah. and, and it, it's really easy to get discouraged yeah. cause you had a rough week or maybe <laughs> the scale doesn't respond or you don't like what you see in the mirror for a week. And then all of a sudden you go back to that abusive boyfriend. And so, I want uh, yeah. you to make sure you're checking in with us and just letting us know how you're going through the process. Even if he has your favorite CDs, don't yeah. go back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's 27, bro. They don't use CDs uh, anymore. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Like, what's the CD? Yeah, way to, way to date yourself, Damn bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, MP3. Uh, <laughs> usually, um, listening to your podcast, I'm trying not to do as much cardio because I am trying to get um, a little bit more muscle and build that muscle up and do a little bit more lifting. So I am trying to stay away from the cardio. Um, I've been tempted to go out for runs, but I just haven't. So the most cardio I'm doing is the swimming. Oh, you're fine. Yeah. yeah. You're That's perfect. okay. If you like doing it too, but don't yeah. be doing it thinking it's helping your body composition. Yeah. Okay? No, if you're doing yeah. it cause you're so connecting you, with your if mom you, yes, and if, enjoy it. If you like to swim cause you enjoy it by all means, dude, yeah, I'll never tell you to stop doing it. But if the if you have to ask yourself, am I doing this because I think this is helping me get to my goal faster? It's not. So don't think that it's not helping you get to your goal faster. But if you enjoy it, do it. I would rather you walk every day and listen to the podcast because I think that's going to serve you more in this situation. Yeah, she swims with her mom. I think it's time with her mom. So yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. those are the right. That's the reason to do it to yep, connect yep. with mm -hmm. mom and enjoy that. That I'm not going to ever tell you not totally. to do, but don't do it for the reasons of thinking you're going to get to your goals faster. It's not going to help that. Yeah. So, and I, I can't wait to see what happens with power lift. I, I have a sneaky suspicion that you're going to you're going to hit some big yeah. numbers yeah with your type of discipline and and consistency and background I, if you trust us and follow what we say mm -hmm. uh, we're going to blow your mind yeah. I, I promise you you'll be eating more than you've ever ate yeah. you'll be working out less than you ever happy. have and you'll have the best body you've ever had yeah. all three of those mm -hmm. promise you well, I like all right uh, oh yeah we got how many protein do you think on doing um the weightlifting should i be doing uh, I, th uh, I, I think hitting about 130 grams at your size, 130, 140 grams a day is fine. Even 120 is fine. Do it from okay. whole natural foods, okay? Don't use a shake unless it's at the end of the day and you missed your targets because let's say you had meetings or something like that. You're like, oh crap, I'm 30 grams short. Then have a shake, but do it from whole natural foods. It'll 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 pay you much uh, better dividends. And it's okay to go over that. That's a minimum. Make that your minimum, but try and hit at least that. If you go over, that's all good. Yeah, that's fine. So so focus okay. on that. All right. Okay, that'll save me some money on some protein bars. So yeah. that's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. All right, we'll check in with us. Good. I team. will. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Just give a cheer. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. just give me cheerleader. I was going to do the B-E hey, I, one. Hey, I'll B-E. tell you, A-G-T-R. have you guys ever trained? Because there's cheerleaders, right? Like the typical high school. And then there's competitive. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys ever trained a competitive? Mm-hmm. I've had some yeah. girls that work like, the, No different than for the Warriors like, and the Niners. It's, yeah, it's a gymnast. Dance. They're basically a gymnast. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the especially yeah, they flip. And, oh, I mean, their strength and their, 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 I mean, they have like incredible, typically the high level ones have incredible genetics. The fact that she got through that without terrible. Dude, I, I'm mystified by that. Well, I think she's going to respond super well to mass power lift so long as she doesn't get in her own way. Yeah. Our next caller is Elijah from Arkansas. Elijah, what's up, man? What's, what's going up, on? Man? Hey. How can we help you? What's up, guys? Good. How are y'all? Good good, good. 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 All right. I'm going to dive right into it. Um, but first, I want to thank y'all for being the info people because everyone else kind of sucks. But I like, I like that so much better than influencer, by the way. Thank you. Info yeah. people. <laughs> We're the info people. <laughs> But Sal, you uh, really helped me because uh, you saw you had a short that came out on YouTube right before I was about to start my fitness journey. Um, I was about to do like a smoothie diet, and you said, "Don't do a smoothie diet. Enjoy your food." Good deal. Mm. Good deal, man. So, Perfect time. Saving lives, guy. Yeah. Good Look job. Yeah. So um, I'm 25 years old. I currently weigh 207 now. From the time I sent this email. Um, when I sent this email, I was 190, 194 at 18% body weight. Now I'm at 207 with 23% body weight. Um, I've been doing MAPS Anabolic Advance. I did MAPS Bands. Um, I was doing MAPS Aesthetic, but I went back to Anabolic Advance to do a bulk. Um, I first didn't think the bulk was working. Now I feel like it is because all my clothes are very tight and all I do is eat. My maintenance is 2,500 calories. So I was kind of just seeing um, where do I need to go next? Uh, I work out in the mornings at 5 a.m. So I also wanted to ask about like sleep as well. Like how can I get the most consistent sleep with waking up that early before and working out? What, um, so your calories, what, what, you're in a bulk right now. So what are you averaging with your calories? Are you tracking? Yeah, I average about twenty seven hundred. So your your uh, your maintenance is twenty five hundred, but you're you're at a two hundred calorie bulk. Yeah, about twenty seven hundred twenty eight. Okay, and then what's your what do you want to accomplish? What are you looking to do moving forward here? Are you trying to drop body fat or build more strength? Drop body fat. Uh, looking to try to get fifteen percent. Okay, in that fifteen range. Okay, I mean, you if you go down to twenty three hundred. Uh, calories, um, you'll get there following a good strength training routine. Like MAPS Anabolic Advance is good. I do think in a cut, you might want to go back to the original MAPS Anabolic. I wouldn't go with a super high volume program like MAPS Aesthetic uh, in a cut. Um, It it might be too much volume. But MAPS Anabolic, the original three-day a week version would be good. Maybe 2,300 calories a day, high protein. And then for sleep, I mean, you got to set your bedtime and you have to prioritize it. So if you're waking up at five, you're waking up at five, you said? Yeah. You be, be in bed by nine. That's that's what I do. Okay. Yeah. So about 8 p.m., start getting ready for bed. So you turn the lights down, no TV, no electronics, or maybe use blue light blocking glasses and be consistent with that every single night. And then what you a lot of people do is when the weekend comes up, like, you know, you might work out Monday through Friday and then you go to bed late Friday so you can sleep in Saturday, do the same thing Saturday, sleep in Sunday. What ends up happening is you actually throw your circadian rhythm off and you actually jet lag yourself on Monday, which does have some negative effects. So I would go to bed at 9 p.m. every night, no matter what, no matter what, that's your bedtime, except for maybe special occasions. I know you're young, so you might want to go yeah. out here and there, but I would try to be in bed by 9 p.m. most nights. That'll make a huge difference in how your body responds, both b- with body fat and with muscle. Elijah, tell me a little bit more about like your your lifestyle, your days. Like, what do you what do you do for work? Are you sedentary, active? Give me a little bit of insight. Sedentary. So I work at a desk all day. Okay. Um, I try to. I've been working on because with Matt's bands with that step counter that they that you guys put in there. I've been trying to like incorporate getting those like 20,000 steps yeah. into like my day. It's just kind of hard sometimes with the, with meetings and stuff, but so I'm just trying to best figure out ways to just take walks throughout the day. Okay. And then if you would say, if you were to be honest and say what your 
your vices are or your bad habits, say around nutrition are and stuff, what would you say those are? Um, mainly it's mainly just the cooking part. So when I get home, I really like to cook. So I've really stepped away from eating out a lot. That was part of my biggest vice. Mm. I've now been able to do a lot more cooking at home. And then I also got into a, uh, a food, like a food program, Flex Pro. I use Flex Pro. Okay. And, nice. And so I've been really stepping away from eating out a lot. It's mainly just for me, I think the sleep part, because mm. I wanted to stay up or my, I'm really having a hard time with like winding, winding down mm. is my, is the big, biggest struggle. Yeah. If you, if you, if you give yourself an hour to wind down, before 9 p.m., you'll find that you can go to sleep. Yeah. It's yeah. really you hard. Make a ritual out yeah. of it. Yeah, what you don't want to do, because I'm like that, I'm the same way. Right? If I keep going, I won't get tired till 11, you know, midnight. But so I, I wind myself down. So what you don't want to do is is like 9 p.m., uh oh, go run up to bed and just hit the pillow, because then you'll find yourself tossing and turning for another hour, or hour and a half. So it's, it's right. 8, 8 p.m., you want to set yourself up with, and literally, it's just yeah. this turn the lights down. Make everything dark. Don't watch TV. Or if you do, wear blue light blocking glasses. Kind of keep everything chill and quiet. And your body will get the signal. And by the time 9 p.m. rolls around, you'll go lay down and you'll be able to fall asleep. This is an area that uh, Doug and I have been talking a lot about lately. We're both trying to improve our sleep scores and get better at it. Right now, I'm, I'm uh, starting to do the three, two, one method. And I'm finding that's mm -hmm. helping out. So if you don't have or if you never tried that, just three hours, okay. three hours before bed is your last meal. So don't eat. Um, or longer, right? So if you're going to bed at, say, 9 o'clock, 6 is when you shut down the eating food, 7 is when you shut down the drinking any fluids, and then an hour or more before you shut down all electronics, phones, TV, stuff yeah. like that. And so... Makes a huge difference. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Okay, okay. So then I guess my next question, since I wake up so early, um, I guess I'm... Because something I also kind of struggle with sometimes is making sure I get enough breakfast in the morning. Yeah. Is uh, Sal, do you like just eat a meal before you work out, no. or do you? No, I eat when eat I, I, I eat when I'm done. So I work oh. out. Yeah, I wake up at five and I'll work out around six thirty or seven typically. Um, I don't eat until afterwards, and I'm typically eating around eight thirty, and I'll have a pretty okay. large, I'll have a pretty high protein breakfast, around fifty to sixty grams of protein. You know, this is this is also an area where the the meal one comes in really handy, especially if you have a job. Because I, I don't know if they'll let you have just boil some water, but if you get like one of those electric water boilers, and then the meal one packets, the protein, thirty grams of protein is already in there. You rip can it do open, two of them. You pour it in a pour yeah. it in a, a bowl and just stir it up, and then you could crush it. In, High protein. Yeah, two yeah. minutes. Either do that at home on your drive over to work, or if you have the luxury at your job to where they'll let you have a thing to boil water and, and mix it. That's a, it's a really valuable product that uh, helps with hitting your protein and taking a meal every day. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. I'll look into that. All right. Yeah. But the sleep, the sleep, if you're consistent at what time you go to bed and you set yourself up, here's the challenge. Do it for seven days in a row and then watch what happens to your performance in the gym, your cognitive performance, like everything. It's going to change everything. It's that impactful. Okay. Okay. I'll work. I'll work on that. That's yeah. I appreciate that. That's been my biggest struggle because I've course. been gaining. I've been gaining strength, and like I was saying, like my my clothes. I'm having to start to buy different shirts. I had to buy a new blazer because my new one or my old one that I was wearing three months ago doesn't fit anymore <laughs> around the shoulders and back area. So yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you're doing good, man. <laughs> you know, we, we 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 did suggest a cut. There's nothing wrong too with kind of hovering right around. You want to know what's funny? Twenty five hundred calories. Yeah. Just yeah. But being it, it just, you're getting strong right now. Yeah. If you're getting well. strong, man, you don't need to necessarily go in a hard cut. It's just it's just it's a process. In it, fact, if you kept your calories around twenty five to twenty six hundred and fixed your sleep, you would see a body composition change anyway. The data on that okay. is very, the data is very clear on that. Like like lack of sleep makes your body store body fat and and, and not want to build as much muscle. So even if you okay. kept it around 25, 26 and just did the sleep part, you would see a, a slow body composition change. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. And um, you said go back. Don't do MAPS anabolic advanced. Go do uh, anabolic instead. Yep. Yeah, do, do the original. Anabolic and do the three-day-a-week version with the trigger sessions okay. on the off days. Do you have that one? No, I do not. All right, we'll send it yeah, to you. We'll get you that. Okay, cool. 
Cool. I appreciate y'all. You got right, it, man. man. Thanks yeah. for calling in. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. See y'all. See you keep later. doing it. Keep giving us good information. All right. You got All it, right. dude. Yeah. The uh this the, for a twenty five year old, the sleep things are the hardest because you want to stay up, you want to go out. But boy, does it make a huge impact. It makes a massive impact. I, I just, I, w- I want to do like the seven day challenge for every 20 year old. Do it for seven days in a row. Watch, don't watch how you feel. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he may not have to really change anything other than just focusing on the sleep because yep. yeah. he's, if he, he very well could be putting on good muscle, which mm-hmm. in turn is just going to speed his metabolism yep. up, which will require more, more calories to sustain. And so then totally. it'll naturally start to lean him out. It's just a, you know, it's so funny when you, some people sometimes are in the perfect spot, yeah. but because they're not seeing major shifts in any direction, they think it's the wrong place, but sure. it's like, the perfect place it's like man you're hovering right around the calorie intake hitting your and then also of course the protein because where he'll go wrong is go overeating a little bit on calories and then also under eating on protein and right. that's where that'll that'll screw you up so hitting your protein intake consistently working on that sleep that'll that'll that's solve right. this look are you a hard gainer you have a tough time putting on muscle we have a hard gainer guide it's totally free it'll help you out you can find it at mindpumpfree.com you can also find us on social media, on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.